Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. Um, we have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Brianna, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I just wanted to share a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout the presentation. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website for sessions later in the week. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Illinois. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Blessing Riemann College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Hi, my name is Debbie Giesing. Um, I am representing Blessing Riemann College of Nursing and Health Sciences. We offer several new programs. We have been a nursing facility for quite some time and we are now adding health sciences. So the programs that we offer, um, Heather, if you wanna pull up the PowerPoint. I'm gonna kind of keep talking while she's pulling that up for us. So we offer several bachelor programs, um, a traditional nursing, a second degree. So a lot of people have um, degrees in another area and decide that they wanna be a nurse. We offer an RN to BSN program that's totally online and a master's program, which is uh, totally online. We now offer a bachelor's for the first time this year in radiology and respiratory. And we have two associate programs, Health Information Management and Med Lab Technician. Awesome. We offer a unique partnership. Um, we join with, I'm gonna. So we join with two partners, Quincy University. If you wanna move to the next one. Um, we offer joint programs, bachelor degree programs in partnership with Culver Stockton and Quincy University. Um, in our programs, uh, the students will complete their prerequisite courses and their gen ed courses on one of our partner campuses. And then they begin their nursing and health sciences courses and all their clinicals on our campus. And that all starts the sophomore year. Uh, we offer a simulation center. It's a million dollar facility. We have nine um, simulators all the way from a preemie baby to a birthing mother. Um, they can talk, blink, cry, die. It's an amazing hands-on clinical experience for students um, if they want to get a hands-on view versus, you know, just read about it in a book. Okay. The highlights of one of our school is we really pride ourselves with personal attention. Um, we have very small class sizes. Usually when they get to about 35, they start splitting them off. Our clinical is usually six to eight per personnel uh, faculty. We have a learning resource center free of charge to students. We have two full-time nurses um, that offer uh, all kinds of counseling. Um, we have a full-time counselor. They offer tutoring um, and they are advisors. We currently have a 96% NCLEX pass rate, which means that all of the people that are studying to be a nurse have to take a statewide test and 96% have passed. We have a financial aid assistance called BERF. It's the Blessing Educational Revolving Fund. Um, any of our students, once they get to the junior year, can sign up for it. Um, and then after they graduate, they can work off all of their junior and senior year at $100 a week or $5,200 a year. So a really amazing chance for them to come out with very little debt. We would encourage you to apply now. Our website is www. If you want to go on to, yeah, BRCN or contact us at 217-228-5520. Again, we're in Quincy, Illinois. Um, we offer several bachelor's programs, and now we are getting into the health sciences. We'd love to hear from you. Wonderful. Thank you uh, so much. And next, we'll hear from the University of Tennessee.
Hello everybody, my name is Kristen Waldrop and I'm with the University of Tennessee. Your admissions counselor is Courtney Clindens and I will have her contact information on the last screen if you wanna take a picture or a screenshot. A little bit about the University of Tennessee, we're located in Knoxville, which is in East Tennessee, right outside the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. We are also nestled along the Tennessee River, so we have a beautiful park-like campus. There's tons of hiking trails and greenways throughout our area. We're located in walking distance to the downtown area, so there's lots of fun things to do, lots of restaurants and festivals and live music happening within about 10 minutes walk from campus. A little bit more about our institution. We were founded in 1794. We are the volunteers. Um, we are a R1 Carnegie classification for research un universities um, and much, much more. You can see um, we're located really close to Oak Ridge National Laboratories, which is a benefit for students who are thinking about the sciences and engineering. Um, we have a little bit over 24,000 undergraduate students, about 31,000 total population, and a little over 360 majors. We have nine academic colleges. We have three colleges which are competitive, which have additional admissions criteria and required you to apply by our early action deadline. That is the College of Architecture and Design, the has, excuse me, Tickle College of Engineering and the College of Nursing. If you wanna to apply to the University of Tennessee, uh, we will take the Common App, but we also have our own application if you're not applying to schools with the Common App. We do require the self-reported academic record and that's how we calculate your GPA for admissions as well as financial aid. We are test optional this year, so you can apply with or without your test scores. We do read applications holistically, so we'll look at everything that's in your application. And we're gonna be looking at the rigor of your curriculum, the classes that you took in school, uh, the courses that you chose to take for your senior year. We're gonna read your essay. We're gonna look at your extracurriculars and your leadership activities, as well as your volunteer experience. And then we do have two letters of recommendation that um, are optional, but I highly encourage students to submit those as well as a supporting statement. And that's just a place that you can just let us know a little bit more about you. So we have a early action deadline of November 1st. We have a regular, regular admissions deadline of December 15th. And if you apply early action, that gives you access to our competitive scholarships as well as honors and scholars but all students who apply early action as well as regular admissions will be evaluated for merit-based scholarships. If you wanna apply for the FAFSA, we will take your FAFSA starting October 1st. And if you apply early action and you have a FAFSA in with us by December 1st, you'll get an estimated award package with your offer of admission Let's see, the Tennessee experience, a little bit more about being a student is probably one of the things you wanna know most. So we do have um, an awesome student success center. We have a fall success team, which is for first year students. You'll have a team of a faculty member, an advisor, and another staff member from campus that will help you navigate your first year experience. We have awesome residence halls. Uh, we have living and learning communities. So those are based on like a theme or a major. We also have honors halls. We do require our first year students to live on campus. When you can make a big campus feel smaller by joining some clubs and organizations, participating in intramurals or joining Greek life. And we also have a really um, vibrant study broad program anything from two weeks to a full year. And you can come visit us. We are open Monday through Friday. We have four campus visits a day and on some Saturdays, you can just register for those events at visit.utk.edu. And this is your admissions counselor, Courtney Clendence, and you can see her phone number and her email on this slide. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kristen. Next, you will hear from North Carolina State University. Good 
afternoon, everybody. My name is Jacqueline Lopez. I'm an assistant director in NC State's Office of Undergraduate Admissions. I just want to start off by thanking each and every single one of you all for being here today and for having all of these awesome colleges on your college search list. That is an amazing, great step, and we're glad that y'all are here. I'm going to talk to you all about NC State University and why you might want to consider it as part of your college search process. I can get my PowerPoint to work. So I want to talk a little bit about who we are. So we are a public four-year university located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now this is the capital of our state and it really becomes advantageous for students to be here for a number of different reasons. We have the really great benefit of being within the research triangle as it's called. Um, now this is often compared in Silicon Valley over in California, just in the, the number of companies and businesses, government agencies, et cetera, that are available for students to pursue internships, uh, co-ops or shadowing opportunities, and to really be career and job ready as they cross that stage at graduation. So our location really does provide students with a really great benefit of that professional development while they're here. We are actually the largest university in the state of North Carolina. We're clocking in at about 36,000 total students, but y'all, I know what you may be thinking. I don't want you all to be intimidated by that number because with a large campus size comes a lot of different opportunities. Undergraduate students specifically, so students obtaining their bachelor's degree here at NC State, there's about 24,000 students. So still, you know, a pretty big number, but I can assure you that class sizes are still small. We have a 14 to one student to faculty ratio and our average class size is 35 students. We are a research one uh, institution or tier one research institution, one of the two public ones in the state of North Carolina. Now, what that means y'all is that all of our professors are involved in doing research in their field of expertise. But what that means for you as students is that you can get involved in research in your own field of expertise in your major, your academic program, et cetera, as early as your first year. Now, this can provide you with really awesome opportunities as you're preparing for graduate school, as you're preparing for a job, as you're going through your entrepreneurship endeavors, whatever that may be, we have a lot of opportunities for you to really thrive in these different environments. We have over a hundred different majors and minors here at the university. I'll go ahead and save that information for the next couple of slides because I do want to touch on why that's important and why you might want to think about what you're interested in academically. Student life-wise, we do have over 700 student organizations for you to choose from. Now, these range from academic organizations, service organizations, fraternity and sorority life, sports, both physical sports, esports, et cetera. So many different ways for you to get plugged into the campus community and find your home away from home on campus. We do have over uh, 200 study abroad programs in case you do want to make that as part of your student experience. And I do want to add that we are a top 10 best value institution when it comes to financial um, kind of responsibility and tuition that is paid to NC State. And this is not just within North Carolina, but nationwide, especially for our out of state students. This is where I want to talk a little bit about academics, y'all. NC State is a STEM-based university, meaning that we're primarily known for our science, technology, engineering, and math programs. In fact, we do have the largest college of engineering in the entire state of North Carolina, with 18 different engineering majors for you to choose from. NC State is a little bit unique when it comes to the application process. You will actually be applying directly into your academic program. So you'll choose your first choice and your second choice major on your application. And if admitted, you will begin directly into your program that you are admitted into. So I really do encourage you all to just take a look at our different programs and I'm happy to provide the link for you all after the presentation for you all to just browse through what we have to offer. And now I do want to touch on a little bit on how applications are reviewed, but mostly because I want this to be an opportunity for you all to really know how to prepare for your college applications. So a really big part that we look at is your academic achievement, how you're doing when you're in high school. For us, this means the grades that you're making, as well as the classes that you're taking. 
So our strongest applicants are making A's and B's in their classes with mostly A's and taking advantage of those rigorous courses that are offered at or through your high school, AP classes, IB, dual enrollment, whatever that may be. Those not only look good on a college application, but those will really prepare you for the rigor of a college curriculum. Test scores are optional for us this year as well. So you do have the option of choosing whether or not you'd like to submit those test scores. I know that says 2021, but change that to 2022 in your minds because that does definitely does apply for this year as well. And if you do decide to submit your test scores, you can self-report them on your application. Your interest in the program that you're applying for very much goes with applying directly into your program. We want to see that you like it, y'all, and this can be seen through your academic preparation, your involvements, as well as what you tell us directly on your application as to how and why you're interested in your program. Your extracurricular activities, y'all, now is the time to be involved and do things outside of the classroom, whether it's clubs, uh, volunteering, etc. Your application will be reviewed within the background and opportunities that are awarded to you at or through your high school or community. And of course, essays are required on the application as well so that we can get to know you outside of your academics. If you are interested in learning more about NC State, I do encourage you to visit our website. And if you have any questions right now, feel free to put them down in the Q&A and I'll be happy to answer them. But thank you all again for your interest. Wonderful. Thank you, Jacqueline. And next we will hear from Texas Tech. Jennifer, you might be on mute. I see your screen though. Sorry about that. I apologize, everyone. My name is Jennifer Maupin. I'm here representing Texas Tech University in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. So just a little bit about Texas Tech um, and who we are. We are proud to be home to over 40,000 students at Texas Tech University, where we have the opportunity to offer a low student to teacher ratio at Texas Tech. And we are also a tier one Carnegie, Carnegie Research Institution, as well as a Hispanic serving institution um, in the United States. We are located in West Texas. So Texas is huge. And if you're not very familiar with it, you can see exactly where Lubbock, Texas is on this map here. But Lubbock is a great college town um, with almost 300,000 residents that are permanent residents in Lubbock. The majority of Texas Tech students are not from the West Texas area. Most of our students are from over 300, 300 miles away, as you can see here on this map. So, um, various parts of Texas, near, nearby states, all over um, the U.S. and out um, in all over um, the, the country and then overseas as well. <clears throat> Lubbock has a lot to offer for our students ranging from parks, lakes, nearby hiking and skiing opportunities. We have several museums, a lot of live entertainment where a number of artists come to perform on campus at our United Supermarkets Arena where um, our basketball team plays. Some of our other opportunities that encompass Texas Tech University in Lubbock on our main campus is we um, have 10 different academic colleges and within that 150 different degrees for students to choose from. We also have our graduate school, law school, and health science center, which is home to our medical school, all on our same, all on the same campus in Lubbock. So we're a very large continuous campus that offers all of these areas. We also just opened our vet school this fall semester. We had our very first class. Um, our vet school is not on our main campus. It's about an hour north of, of Lubbock, so up in Am um, Amarillo, if any of you all are familiar with that. But close to our main, main campus, but just a little bit um, 
off campus, but still part of our Texas Tech system. It's something that we've been working really hard for for the past few years to be able to add a vet school to the Texas Tech University system. And we're super excited that we were able to do that. Within our 10 colleges are on the main campus, we like to think that we have something for everyone, ranging from our Rawls College of Business, our College of Media and Communication, uh, to the Whitaker College of Engineering and Vision, and when also our Talkington College of Visual and Performing Arts. And then in addition to academics, our students um, are able to find a home with over 550 50 different organizations to be a part of. We have a number of different student um, housing opportunities. Our students are required to live on campus for their first year. There are also plenty of places to eat um, on campus. These include um, places like Chick-fil-A and Starbucks and Einstein Brothers, as well as a little bit of Texas Tech flair with our own Raider Red Donuts. Our student rec center provides students the opportunity to work out, they can do free weights, and they can play a pickup game of basketball, they can la relax in our beautiful lazy river, which you see here. We do participate in Division I Big 12 athletics. Um, we have won our past three games with football, so it's really exciting on campus right now as we move in to the um, conference play coming up here soon. We also offer free tutoring within all of our majors to ensure that our students have tools for success. And our Career Center is a great resource for students as they are starting to prepare to enter their professional careers and move closer to graduation. As far as your admissions requirements to Texas Tech, students are required to submit an application. Um, our application, we are on three platforms. So Apply Texas, Common App, or the Coalition. You can use whichever platform that you would like to. When applying to Texas Tech, we do have a $75 application fee and there are opportunities with fee for fee waivers, just depending on your circumstance. Um, we do require students to create what's called a Raider Connect account. And that is where students can connect their self-reported academic record. We do require the self-reported academic record as opposed to an official transcript. And that's something new for Texas Tech this year. We are test optional for fall 2022 students. So um, you are welcome to apply test optional um, for admissions and for scholarships and you will be able to select if you would like us to look at your scores or not look at your scores whenever you are applying on one of those three platforms. We also offer assured admissions for students that are based off of high school class rank and SAT or ACT scores. You can see those here and um, this is assured admissions is only offered for students who are applying by submitting the test. If you are applying test optional, um, students will go through a holistic review. And then if you are submitting a test but do not meet the requirements that you see on your screen, you will then go through a holistic review. In regards to tuition, um, our cost of attendance is based off of location and um, students who are out of state, so who do not live in Texas. If you receive a minimum of a $1,000 competitive scholarship from Texas Tech, that does qualify you for in-state tuition and then the scholarship on top of that. You can see the scholarships here are for our merit-based scholarships, which are based off of class rank and SAT, ACT scores. We also offer merit scholarships for students who are applying test optional that are going to go through a holistic review for scholarships. We would love for you all to visit us. We have um, campus visits daily, Monday through Friday and select Saturdays. And then our big Texas Tech preview is Monday, October 11th, where we really showcase the campus. We start bright and early, but we wake you up with a pep rally. And there's all kinds of things going on all day. So we'd love for you all to join us during that if you can. And of course, if there's anything that we can assist you with, just let us know. We're here for you. You can check, connect with us through your Raider Connect account um, by phone or by email. And thank you all so much for being here.
Thanks so much, Jennifer. Um, if all of our wonderful panelists want to turn on their cameras now, uh, we do have some Q&A for them. Um, so we will have you answer in the same question, the same order in which you presented. So the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So Debbie, you can go ahead and go first. I would always suggest that you go to the campuses, do your homework, look up the information about a school, but get on those campuses. Sometimes the way that a school looks feels different. So get on the campus, do your homework and see which ones really interest you and offer, kind of make your pros and cons and see which ones offer the most that you're, the most important things for you. I would suggest making sure that you are checking your email regularly. If you have signed up to get emails from um, any of the places that you're interested in applying, and as soon as you apply, make sure you're checking it daily, sometimes twice a day. I know that sounds like a lot, but that's how we communicate with you. And I've had students who have missed some very important deadlines or important information about their application from not reading those emails. So that would be like my biggest takeaway in the application process. Yes to the emails. Please check your emails, y'all. Um, and another thing that I would suggest for you all is go ahead and apply early if you're able to. Um, I know that at least for NC State, if you apply early, that usually means more scholarships. And that tends to be the case for a lot of different colleges. So applying early if you are able to do so. Um, and also, y'all, like going on the visiting colleges, I know that virtual opportunities are here to stay for a lot of different colleges, most if not all of them. So if you're not able to go and physically visit colleges, please take advantage of those virtual opportunities that will definitely continue. Yeah, and, and I am gonna strive and, and piggyback on that email. And more importantly, is making sure you're using the same email address, because um, I know, students y'all have a lot of email addresses and so just making sure that you're using the same one um, for various institutions like just making sure you're keeping track of that so you know where that is um i think just being able to connect with someone in the admissions office so that you have somebody that you can reach out to when you have those questions what is great about so many institutions these days is that a lot of institutions have a regional representative so whether they are based in your area permanently or they are in their hometown wherever their campus is but then have somebody that's specifically designated to your area so connecting with them and and um, utilizing them as a resource when you have any questions come up so you know exactly who to contact and um, aren't having to call every single number on the campus directory. That is some great advice. Um, the next question for you all is, what is just one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, our simulation center for a school of our size, we have a million dollar facility with nine simulators all the way from a preemie baby to a birthing mother. Um, they talk, they blink, they cry, they die. Very unusual for a school of our size to be able to offer that for students. Um, and it also kind of really piggybacks on our personal attention to each and every student and the small, small size. There's a lot of really good reasons to apply to and attend the University of Tennessee, but I would say one of the best uh, things about our university is how beautiful our campus is. If you check out our virtual events and our virtual um, campus map, you'll be able to see all of the areas uh, on campus and around our campus. If you're outdoorsy, if you're artsy, it's a good fit for you. I hope I didn't scare y'all when I mentioned that you are asked to apply directly into your major, but I do want to add on to that and just saying that a really good benefit of NC State is that while we do have you apply directly into a major, we do have a lot of built-in exploration programs for you to continue to explore your academic interests. Our College of Engineering, uh, you'll apply to that, but you'll go into our engineering first year program. Well, 
so that you can explore all of the 18 engineering majors. Similarly to our business programs, as well as our sciences, there's a lot of built-in exploration that you're able to, to uh, pursue while you're here. Because y'all, I remember when I was a high school senior, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I kind of still don't. And so we want you to take those opportunities to really explore what we have to offer. And NC State does have those opportunities for you. At Texas Tech, we'd really like you to know about our just our friendly family environment on campus and surrounding the Texas Tech campus in Lubbock. Um, like I said in the presentation, Lubbock is a college town and it makes up um, a lot of the activity going on in West Texas. And so we're a great place for students to consider. There's a lot going on. We are growing with over those with over 40,000 students and new stuff getting put on campus all of the time, as I'm sure on every campus, there's all kinds of construction going on. But this, know that you will find a home in this second family as whenever you visit Texas Tech University. Those are some great things. Um, the last question for you all is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, I, I think, like they said, the communication, um, I think we, again, with being a small college, can offer a lot of personal attention. So we hear a lot of people say, oh, we heard that we can't get into your school. Um, and so I think just the idea that the communication, reach out, apply early, and really get to know your school, give the admissions people a chance to reach out to you and explain to you and get rid of all those myths between maybe a community college or a four-year institution, and, and really give us a chance to talk to you and explain everything to you. It is not true that if you submit, do not submit test scores that we will automatically deny you. So if you are considering applying test optional, talk to your admissions counselor, be upfront and honest. We are not gonna take it personal. We're not gonna judge you. So it may be in your best interest to apply without test scores, but it may be in your best interest if you have them and they are good scores that you might wanna submit them to be considered for, um, like honors and scholars or scholarships, while you can still um, apply test optional for those, you may not be aware that your scores are actually going to qualify you for those programs. So talk to your admissions counselor, uh, make sure that you have everything that you need to do for the application process while you're on the phone with them, but don't be afraid to apply test optional and see what happens. Well, contrary to what we may be popular belief, we do read your essays and they are so important. They really do provide a different perspective outside of your grades and outside of your involvements and outside of your test scores if you choose to submit them. They're really used to really complete that well-rounded and that holistic review. So we do read them like a human being really does read your essay. So please go ahead and put that extra time in that and them and that extra effort. Please read them. Um, make sure that you rate the right school in your essays. Um, so they really do, are important and they really do make a difference. I think a big myth is that things do not happen instantaneously. I know we are in this electronic world where things we want things to happen very quickly, but if you apply to an institution and then you call 10 minutes later, that does not mean that we have your application and are able to view it at that 10, um, 10 minutes after you hit, hit that submit button. And the same thing with submitting SAT and ACT scores. If you submit them, we do not necessarily get them um, within the hour. <laughs> um, it does take some time. They do come to us electronically, which is great. So um, hopefully things um, do move faster than sending them through regular mail, but it still does take some time. And I know a lot of that is a little bit challenging because we live in this fast paced world and everything is electronic, but it does take time for your things to get to us. And um, you can always verify if your things have officially been received with your admissions counselor. 
Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you learned a lot the last hour. I know I did. Um, just uh, to let you know, uh, when you close the window, there will be a link for a very quick five question survey. We'd really appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, we encourage you to check back the schedule and sign up for more sessions later in the week. And you'll be able to find this session's recording and all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Thank you so much. And thank you to our facilitators who did such a great job this evening. Um, and I hope you all have a great night. Bye.